I'm guessing that you fall into one of two categories. If you work with flow sheets and process design, then this statement is pretty obvious to you. On the other hand, you could be someone who's thinking, hold on, we've got mountains of textbooks with big equations and charts that tell us how to calculate pressure drop from tube diameters and baffle spacings and tray spacings and all sorts of other things. In fact, mathematically, it's quite an intensive process to get to a pressure drop. How is it that you already know what the pressure drop of something is before you've designed it? If you do fall into the latter group, then you're in the right place. This is so obvious to me now. I wish someone said it this explicitly back when I was at university. If you've set out to do a detailed design of a piece of equipment, you already know what the pressure drop of that piece of equipment should be. At university, you usually have to size a reactor or a distillation column or a heat exchanger and you need to pick some sort of tube size or other component sizes and one of the steps in the process of sizing it is you need to calculate what the pressure drop of that specific thing is. I remember doing that with the heat exchanger design, arriving at the pressure drop and thinking, okay, so now what? The confusion, in my case at least, stemmed from the fact that we covered detailed equipment design first and the first time I ever did a process flow sheet was right at the end of my degree, way after I looked at sizing of heat exchangers. But in reality, that process is totally reversed. By the time you've set out to do detailed design of equipment, you already have a process flow diagram. The engineer who's done that process flow diagram has gone and assigned pressure drops to every single piece of equipment in that process. You can think of it as a pressure drop budget exercise. You cannot spend more than you've been given in your budget. They have said to you, okay, great, you're designing my heat exchanger, right? I'm giving you half a bar worth of pressure drop budget at our design flow rate. If you design and you use all those equations that I mentioned to find out that the pressure drop of the heat exchanger is actually one bar, well, realize that that extra half a bar it needs to come from somewhere. While you're designing your heat exchanger, one of your colleagues will be designing the pump or the compressor that's driving the flow through the process. The way they know the discharge pressure of that pump or compressor is that they're going to look at the flow sheet and sum together all the pressure drop budgets of every piece of equipment in the process. If your heat exchanger has more than half a bar at design flow, there is a risk that the pump or compressor is going to be end up undersized. The process will still operate, but your plant will not run at the design capacity. Now that isn't to say that the value on the PFD is final. Maybe after doing some detailed engineering, you find that the pressure drop budget just wasn't enough. Maybe you were designing a distillation column and you found that you needed more trays to get the required product purity, but you can't do that without more pressure drop. This could happen, but that doesn't mean you have no idea what the pressure drop will be before you've started designing. So you've accepted your half a bar worth of pressure drop for your heat exchanger. You set out to do the design and pick a tube size. Let's say you pick half inch tubes. You do the calculation and you see that the pressure drop for this heat exchanger will be 0.6 bar. That's more than your budget because your tubes are too small. The velocities are too high. You need larger tubes. So you pick the next standard size up. So you pick three quarter inch tubes and you go through the process again and you calculate that the pressure drop is now 0.4 bar. Now you're under your budget. Now you could go and calculate the theoretically perfect tube size that it gives you exactly half a bar at design flow. But that thing will end up being a custom built part that will cost you way more. And the only benefit is it makes you feel good about your calculation. You pick the three quarter inch tube, you're under the budget, you're happy. Equipment data sheets, most often heat exchanger ones, will usually give two pressure drops, an allowable pressure drop and a calculated pressure drop. In this example, our allowable pressure drop is half a bar, but our calculated after we've sized the three quarter inch tubes is 0.4 bar. Why is it 
the data sheets report both of these values? Well, after I've sized my heat exchanger and it's got 0.4 bar worth of pressure drop instead of 0.5, you don't go to the person who did the process flow diagram and say, I've saved 0.1 bar worth of pressure drop, please redo the process flow diagram, because then they're going to have to go to the person who's doing the pump and the compressor and say, you need to redo the pump and the compressor design. It also tells the end user, the people who are going to be operating the plant, that, okay, my heat exchanger when you're running it, you're only going to measure 0.4 bar pressure drop across it, but it can go all the way up to 0.5 bar because the rest of the process is designed around that value. So you should be as close as possible to that pressure drop budget without going over so that the rest of the process runs as it is designed to do. You shouldn't be too far below your pressure drop budget either because that will mean that your equipment is way too big and you're wasting money and capital from the project trying to get, trying to minimize your pressure drop for your heat exchanger. Go and ask any engineer that works in process design what the pressure drop of a specific piece of equipment is and likely they'll be able to tell you. You may turn around and say, hold on, how are you able to give me an answer when I haven't even told you, are we talking about a dinky little one ton per day plant or are we talking about a plant that produces a thousand tons a day? And that's exactly the point. We don't need to have done the detailed engineering of those two different scenarios before we know what the pressure drop budget is. Those two processes, despite being very different sizes, will have similar operating pressures. It's not as if the small plant operates at 10 bar and the large plant operates at 100 bar. Those two processes operate at exactly the same pressure and that is only possible because every single corresponding piece of equipment, well, their pressure drops match. The thing that's different between them is the mass flow rate. But to get the same pressure drop, we need bigger equipment on the bigger plant. So the point is to say, if you are ever doing detailed design of any equipment and you don't have the pressure drop budget, your problem is not properly defined. It is supposed to be part of the design brief or part of your scope of work. If that information is not available to you, well then you need to go and look what the pressure drop of similar pieces of equipment in similar industries is.